Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you all? Good. Here. Good. That's a good first step. Um, glad to have you all here this morning. Fourth Sunday in Advent. So Christmas Eve is next on Saturday. Uh, we'll have a five o'clock with child care for little ones and a 7.30, uh, they're both basically the same. One is not necessarily a family service. Um, and they'll obviously both have singing, but the 7.30 service will have carol singing at 7.10. So you've, you've seen that in the bulletin and whatnot. So for today's liturgy, everything is Pretty much as usual, I'm just going to call your attention to page 11 in your bulletin. We're going to sing a canticle for our communion hymn called the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. And the first two lines there are called the Antiphon, and the tenors and basses will sing that, and then we pick up and sing the verses. And you'll notice, perhaps, that there's only one set of notes uh, for each, each word, each line, because it's in plain song. Don't worry about plain song. Um, it's beautiful. We use it when we do the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we use it at other times. So we know how to sing in plain song. Um, just don't. Don't worry about it when you get to that part. And please uh, sing out. That's all we have to think about. So uh, we have a guest violinist today, Phoebe. Thank you for being here. And uh, calm ourselves and um, listen to the praise.
of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. First lesson is from the book of Isaiah. The 
again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask the sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is a child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curd and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to read along with me in portions of Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph by the flock, shine forth to you by the only father there. In the presence of that man, thy man is not in the land of self. Bring up your strength and arm to help us. Read the comfort, O God of hosts. So the light to your countenance and lead the way to them. O God of hosts, how long do we be angered by the prayers of the Lord? You have sent them to the right tears. You have given them the last tears of strength. You have made them to be the of our enemies, and our enemies fly out of stones. We are the Lord of the Lord. So we are the light of the darkness, and we are the light of the darkness. Let us pray and be a part of the death of the darkness. The son of man who that made so strong to your heart, and so will be ever turned away from you. Give him a sign that we may fall upon your knees. For you took the hope of your love and grace, so the light of your time and you shall be saved. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God, with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship, to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the son conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Many, many years ago, I'm afraid to say it's now decades ago, um, I had to have a rather complicated, at that time, surgery. And uh, um, my husband and I lived in Indianapolis, but uh, because my father was a physician at Beaumont in Roy Lowe, before it was the mega hospital that it is now, um, we came from Indianapolis to Detroit we needed to be seen by uh, the physician there and to have what turned out to be this fairly long and complicated surgery. Now, as you know, if you've had surgery, once they put you on that stretcher where they're going to go through the hallways and you're going to end up in an operating room, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, your nerves or your anxiety or your trepidation, you're sort of at the mercy of the cart attendants and the stretcher bearers and the people who are in the operating room. And if you're lucky, they'll give you a little something um, to help calm your, your anxiety. But uh, Dan did not get anything like that. And at the time, we had become Episcopalians in Indianapolis, but did not know any Episcopalians up here in Michigan. So Dan was basically on his own to wait for the surgery to be completed. It was one where they were opening up my belly and taking out a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, it occurred to us that since we were Episcopalians now, we ought to be able to call an Episcopal church and ask for some help, not for me, but for Dan, to help him um, get through the surgery. Somebody for him, uh, someone to be with him. And I found out later that within about a half an hour after um, he had called asking if somebody could just be with him during the surgery, a priest showed up. Um, and it turned out that the surgery was almost six hours long. And that priest stayed with my husband for all six hours. 
and they sat in the waiting room and they went for walks around the hospital grounds. They had some lunch, they had some coffee, they had a conversation. Dan was basically kept busy from worrying about how I was doing. And at the end of that time, at the end of the day, and the next day, when I was a little more coherent, we both had the feeling that we had been visited by an angel. That is, the meaning of the word angel is messenger. And what we had received through no doing of our own, no, you know, um, no action of our own except having made this one phone call. What we had received was someone who represented the presence of God for that whole day. And it did feel like this man was an angel. And the message he brought to us, brought to Dan, was do not be afraid. In a sense, I am with you and everything will be all right. That's one of the most profound times that I have had an experience, I would say, with a messenger of God, with someone who I would consider an angel. But it's amazing how God can use people like you and I, not extraordinary people, but people like you and I, to message other people. <laughs> in such a way that they feel God's presence and God's reassurance, God's comfort. You may know that uh, the United Church of Christ has a slogan that they've been using for several years. The slogan is, God is still speaking. And I wish the Episcopal Church had thought of that first. Because that's such a profound statement to say God is still speaking. Because we know when we read the scriptures that it seems to have been that God spoke directly to people like Ahaz and especially all those characters in the Old Testament. We know that God speaks to us through scripture not literally the words, every word of scripture, but in terms of the whole message of the scripture, God speaks to us. And we know that in prayer, that's a conversation with God and we can listen and we can converse and hear God. But sometimes we hear God through what we would call a messenger. And apparently that is what happened to Joseph in this account of Jesus' birth. Joseph apparently is um, an upright, righteous man. A man who probably keeps the law, who wants to do things the right way, who is devout. And he had been betrothed to Mary, who might be just 12 or 13 years old. That was the custom of the day. But it's found that she is pregnant by the Holy Spirit, whatever that might have meant to them at the time. But Joseph, as it says, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, had the option to divorce her. He even has the option to put her out in public and have her stoned to death. And yet, what he planned to do was just dismiss her quietly. And so we could say that he was a kind and compassionate man. So he had decided to do this, and then we find out that 
a messenger of the Lord, an angel of the Lord comes to him in a dream. So those of you who have nice vivid dreams, you might think of God talking to you through your dream. But this angel of the Lord came to him and said the first thing that angels say whenever they encounter people, which is, do not be afraid. The angel comes to Joseph, tells him not to be afraid, and explains to him that this child that is in Mary's womb is conceived by the Holy Spirit, and he is to name him Jesus, and that name Jesus means something to the effect of he will save his people from their sins. The word Jesus has something to do with salvation from sin. And of course, the writer Matthew wants you to know that there was a prophecy about this that we read in the first lesson, and we could go into some detail about it. But Matthew is using that phrase about a virgin shall conceive and bear a son as a way to prove that what is happening in Matthew's gospel is true. But there, Jesus, this man who will save, is also named Emmanuel. God, God with us. And so the story of salvation depends on Joseph as much as it does on Mary. That is, if Joseph had decided to divorce Mary, who knows where the story would have gone. If Joseph had not listened to the messenger, who knows where the story would have gone. But as it is, Joseph did listen to that messenger, did listen to the message, heard the voice of God, overcame his fear, and took Mary as his wife. And I'm tempted to say, as Paul Harvey used to say, you know the end of the story. What I want to suggest today is that the people of the United Church of Christ have it right. That is, God is still speaking. And God speaks through God's messenger, through God's angel. And as I said, those people, those messengers are you and I. You don't have to go to the costume store and buy wings and halos. Because when you speak the word of God to another, it is captivating and it is convincing and it is comforting. And it's sometimes challenging. I want you to take on this identity. Take on, be willing to accept this thought that you also are messengers of God. That God is still speaking, not back there in the scriptures, not just with the people who were in the Old and New Testament, not even hundreds of years ago when there were all these fabulous people who we now count as saints and whatnot. The God is still speaking through you. And so I want you, I want you to take on that identity in those clothes. I want you to help spread the message of God's salvation. I want you to spread the word that God is with us. 
and that we need not be afraid. I want you to be bearers like the wise ones were, like the shepherds were, like all those others were who had an encounter with Jesus, no matter how small it might seem to be. So as we approach Christmas and the celebration of Christmas and the story of Christmas from more like Mary's point of view, don't forget what part Joseph had and how he did his part and that we can also do our part. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we affirm the historic faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the Son of God, the Father for our In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our communities, friends, and neighbors, and our friends of our home, for this community, the nation, and the world. For justice, for even our enemies, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of honor, fear, for injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for the comes to minister to the benefit of and the unity, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all the participation of the world and the world to be received. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Melanie, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For our participants, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. And especially today, we pray for a just and any war in Ukraine. Chuck Single, Roger Parker, Lennon Lenny Harrison. Bessie Watson and Ellen. We pray for Linda, Jerry's sister, Emma, Walsh's, Walsh's friend, Erin, Emily's cousin, Kathy, Nancy, Sarah, and Sue, who are friends of Mother Carol. We also pray for Saint, um, our congregation and clergy of St. James, as well as the Anglican Church of Korea. Pray for John. 
Sorry for those who are still suffering from COVID. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, the King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kingdom be upon us. Who put their trust in you? Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you and in our prayer and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors. We are truly suffering and we want to do that. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and redeem us, that we may be our lives to know you. And walk in your grace to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. As I said earlier, it's good to see you all here. Um, there are two ways you've gotten an announcement this week. One is through the email. And if for some reason you're not on the email list, uh, check with Julie Lowry. Or if you think you're on the email list but didn't get uh, the announcements on Friday, then maybe check your social or primary, no, social or Promotion tabs. Um, and the spam files. <laughs> Maybe I should check that. <laughs> oh, but the ones in the in the bullets in here are um, that Margaret lets us know that uh, some of us who are pledging to elective fund transfer. Uh, it goes directly out of our checking account each month. Uh, that's a very efficient, easy way that you can uh, pay your pledge and um, you don't forget uh, through that method. So see Margaret if you would like to consider that. Our final session of uh, meeting at Mary Oliver around Christmas Eve is this Tuesday night. Um, I guess I get the link and you would best the link. Yeah. Okay. And then I think we just need one more person, one more person to help paint the ceiling. Uh, we, have, have, we have two, I believe, to help him. So if we have another one, that'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. I feel like great. doing the auction. Do I hear one? Do I hear one? And it'll be on January 5th, probably at nine, because. Otherwise, it would be at seven, and I didn't think that was appropriate for most. Right, people. let us sort of an early riser. Yeah. So nine o'clock. He thinks it's going to take two hours, but um, he'll have everything ready to roll paint the ceiling downstairs. So if you could see Len or even let Wendy know, um, 
that would be very helpful. Are there things we've already needed to see these? Um, are there other things that were not in Friday's announcement for today's? No. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us 
We pray together. Body of Christ is the bread of the 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 world. Body of Christ is the bread of the world. Body of Christ is the bread of the world. Body of Christ is the bread of the world. Body of Christ is the bread of the world. Body of Christ is the bread of the world.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.